Earl Bradley was a pediatrician at Babies Pediatrics in Milford, Delaware. His offices were decorated with carnival rides and movie theaters for the children. But behind his eccentric nature, he was abusing hundreds of his young patients and he had been doing it for over a decade. Welcome to History's Biggest Villains. Earl Bradley was born on May 10th, 1953 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He graduated from the Temple University School of Medicine in 1983 and completed his pediatric residency at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in 1986. Around 1984, he began working at Frankfort Torresdale Hospital on Knights Road in Northeast Philadelphia. He opened his own practice in a small complex just a few blocks away at Academy and Red Lions Road in Morrill Park. He continued to work at Jefferson until a sudden move to Lewis, Delaware in 1995. The move was abrupt and poorly planned with many patients complaining that they were not even notified that appointments had been canceled. In Lewis, Bradley was widely regarded as eccentric. His practice, Babies Pediatrics, had patients from area farming and resort communities. The medical offices located near Lewis in Sussex County were decorated with carnival rides and other children-oriented decorations such as a giant statue of Buzz Lightyear from Disney's Toy Story and a small movie theater showing Disney movies. He owned several vehicles which were painted yellow and black with eyes and a tail to resemble bumblebees. The oddities extended to his home where he prominently displayed a full suit of medieval armor on his porch. The first allegations of inappropriate conduct by Bradley began in 1994, when Thomas Jefferson University Hospital investigated a patient's complaint of sexual misconduct. There was a second allegation in 1995, but the hospital could not verify the claim and records remained sealed. Bradley promptly closed his struggling private practice and relocated with his children to Lewis, where he took a job at BB Medical Center. Hmm. In 2004, Bradley's sister Linda Barnes, who had served as an office manager at his medical office, alerted the State Medical Society that parents had complained to her about inappropriate touching by Bradley. Barnes also reported that Bradley physically and emotionally abused his own son and stole prescription antidepressants from the office. Allegations were made again in 2005. Police records show that a nurse reported that he videotaped kids playing and other doctors reported complaints about long and unnecessary vaginal exams. When police in Milford, Delaware sought a warrant to arrest him for inappropriately touching a child patient, the Attorney General's office concluded at the time that there was insufficient evidence to warrant a prosecution. On December 16, 2009, following a year-long investigation and complaints of inappropriate touching by a two-year-old patient, Bradley was arrested and charged with nine counts, including a felony charge for a fourth degree rape of a two year old patient. Soon after, relying on more than 13 hours of videotaped rapes and molestations discovered by police in Bradley's home and office, additional warrants were issued. These included felony warrants for several counts of child exploitation and first degree rape. Bradley surrendered to the authorities on December 18, 2009, and his bail was set at $2.9 million cash. An initial preliminary hearing was delayed after prison officials placed Bradley on suicide watch. His attorney, Eugene Marr, denied that Bradley was suicidal but complained that prison officials had deprived him of his prescription glasses. In February 2010, a grand jury sitting for the Delaware Superior Court indicted Bradley on 471 charges, including counts of rape and exploitation. 103 victims were identified in the indictment, though the Attorney General indicated that they expected to identify even more victims. The indictment included allegations that Bradley had forced children as young as three months old to engage in sexual acts. It also revealed that Bradley had videotaped sexual assaults during which his victims appeared to lose consciousness. The videos also show children in diapers screaming as they attempt to escape from Bradley before he raped them in an outbuilding on the property. A three month old child, bro? Jesus Christ. Though his private lawyers quit after Delaware took steps to freeze his assets, Bradley was afforded a public defender and arraigned on March 24, 2010. He pleaded not guilty on all charges and a follow-up hearing was scheduled for May 17th. The Delaware Board of Medical Practice suspended Bradley's license permanently on February 19th, 2010. Yeah, probably a decade too late. Then Delaware Governor Jack Markell concerned about failures in the medical, police, and legal communities that allowed Bradley's crimes to continue for more than a decade 
called for an independent review. Widener University Law School Dean Linda Ammons was appointed to head up that review. Delaware Attorney General Bo Biden son of then Vice President Joe Biden announced in a January 2010 speech that he would not seek election to his father's former seat in the United States Senate because he felt that it was more important to fully pursue Bradley's prosecution. Bradley's case was moved to Newcastle County from Sussex County because of concerns about getting an impartial jury in Sussex County as many families of his 127 alleged victims lived there. However, Bradley then waived his right to a jury trial opting instead for a bench trial. The case was then moved back to Sussex County. After hearing evidence on June 7, 2011, Judge William C. Carpenter, the presiding judge in his trial, stated that he would issue his verdict at a later date. Two weeks later on June 23rd, Bradley was convicted on all 24 counts on a consolidated indictment, which originally contained 529 counts, 14 counts of rape, seven counts of assault, and three counts of sexual exploitation of a child. On August 26, Judge Carpenter sentenced Bradley to the maximum sentence of 14 consecutive terms of life in prison, plus a further 165 years in prison without parole. Under Delaware law, anyone convicted of raping three separate persons automatically receives life without parole. Judge Carpenter said that Bradley betrayed his patient's trust and disgraced the medical profession and that you will never be in a position to harm a child again. Bradley appealed to the Delaware Supreme Court, claiming that the original search warrant was not specific enough about where the evidence would be located and that the police exceeded the limits of the warrant without probable cause. The Delaware Supreme Court unanimously affirmed Bradley's convictions on September 6, 2012. The search was not specific enough Yet they found 13 hours of videotapes of you abusing children? Come on, man. No, we not know. The office complex housing his former practice was demolished on October 10, 2011. Earlier, state police confiscated the contents of Bradley's storage locker in Rehoboth Beach and destroyed them. The items were to be auctioned off to satisfy unpaid rent, but Biden intervened on behalf of the victims to buy them for a symbolic $1 so as to not take the chance of them ever being used again. Bradley was held in the special housing unit of the James T. Vaughn Correctional Center in Newcastle County until 2016 when Delaware authorities announced that they would move him to an out-of-state prison because many of his victims or state residents that were affected by his actions either worked in or were incarcerated in Delaware prisons. Connecticut authorities revealed that Bradley was moved to the Cheshire Correctional Institution in Cheshire, Connecticut where he still tries to file multiple appeals, which have all been denied. <sighs> you may have wondered why I covered this random case. It's not really a random case to me because when this was happening, this dude's office was 20 minutes from where I used to live at as a kid. 20 minutes, literally in the same county where I used to live at. Because I remember vividly when this happened. I remember when the story broke, where he got caught. I remember where there were rumors of him abusing these children. And it just sickens me. How you. Like how do you get away with this. For years. For a decade and a half. Three month old children. That's a mental illness. But it's not. But I'm not saying he's not guilty. Because he's a mental. Because he's mentally ill. I'm just saying. He has a very weird mental illness he something is wrong with that dude serious something is seriously wrong with him i just remember this and this case really stuck with me because it's just like not much happens in delaware you know delaware is really like one of the smallest states in the united states and not like nothing really happens in the state and this was one of the biggest criminal cases in the state's history if we're being all the way honest so this was just something that struck me like it just creeped me out so much because it was always and you know what I learned? My state, Delaware, has the third highest per capita rate of people on the sexual offenders list out of, in the whole country. So that's not... Because I remember them times I was waiting for the bus and it was a weirdo in a van trying to look at me where I'm, I'm going in the house. I'm going in the house. I just wanted to tell this story because it, this struck a chord with me. But I really hope you appreciate... Hope you like this story, you know what I mean? If you like this video, hit, this, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel, uh, this will be this will be on uh, you know all my all the uh, the the, the, the neck words like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all this other stuff. This will be on there. But Jesus Christ, I, this this just strikes strikes a chord with me because it just 
ugh, it just creeps me out. But I hope you really enjoyed this, but I'm out. Peace.